Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Episode 7, Adventures in Careerland. Hey, well, that's our very sophisticated music. Uh, we've had some good discussion about the use of our music. Some people like the old Some people loathed it. So we have chosen new music. Thanks to Lily and Isabella, we've added music. Lily, is this your favorite music? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> oh, Lil Lily doesn't care. She just says choose the music. <laughs> Cassie, what did you think of that music? It was all right, yeah. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. No, <laughs> nobody cares. Our, our podcast needs music. So that's our music. I hope you like it. Uh, welcome to our seventh episode of Adventures in Career Land. I'm Adriano Magnifico. I'm the career and entrepreneurship consultant at Louis Riel School Division. And we are broadcasting live from the Louis Riel School Division Arts and Tech Center Broadcast Media Studio. As I say all the time, Broadcast Media is one of 13 special programs in this building, and they are applied learning and technical programs that students choose both from high school and beyond high school to give them a leg up on employment possibilities and opportunities. It's a tough slog out there in COVID-19 environment, so any extra any extra kind of advantage or extra skill you can acquire is super useful and the broadcast media program is one of those special programs that gives them skills that are applicable in a variety of contexts so we as usual we're with our special team of lily chen lily Hello. how are you doing i'm good I'm lily good. what have you done all week all week I work uh, these two days on the radio room and uh, with uh, Bella and Anna, we are uh, doing the host and DG for our LRSD radio. All right. And that's another thing that Lily's talking about. She is a member of the broadcast media program as a student. Yes. So she has a number of projects. The Adventures in Careerland podcast is one of her projects. Yes. And Isabella is our other producer. How are you? And Isabella's in a different space. She looks like she's in a special room. We put her there because we don't like her, but we love Isabella. <laughs> we love Isabella. And it's important that you understand we were, we couldn't find a chair. So we put her into the other room here and she's going to be with us via her computer, but she's really only 20 feet away in the other room. Isabella, what have you been doing all week? Yeah, like Lily was saying, the radio and it was it's been so fun because these girls are so amazing lily and anna uh, we're a good team i'd say yeah, yeah well that's interesting what's your other so you're working on another podcast right so uh, what, are, what are your other podcast topics oh yeah for example um like for my podcast i do conversations about film and tv shows that we watch um and some pop culture related uh, topics and I know that Lily has a very different type of like each one of us has a different podcast of our own with different um, topics that are related to what we like yeah my podcast is mainly focused on career and culture mm -hmm. and because I will discuss with people to tell us about their stories because most of the people they will have some different culture background and this kind of background can influence their choice when they make make up their mind to choose their career. So, Very good. So that's my podcast uh, scene. So Lily, you're becoming between between this podcast on career, your own podcast. Yeah. People will be climbing mountains to talk to you about <laughs> help me with my career, Lily. No, no. I, I just I just feel like everybody can share some very useful information to everybody. Yeah, and it's all yeah. about the story, right? You mentioned uh, between Isabella and Lily, those stories are so inspirational, right? Yeah. And, and they're so powerful. Yeah. And you're right. I think we can glean from what people say, see the similarities, mm -hmm. feel that people feel the way I do sometime. And that's very, that's very helpful mm -hmm. and very inspirational sometime. And also you see new possibility and wonder, hey, what if, 
Mm -hmm. If this person's doing it, why can't I do that? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yes. Our great fortune is that we have the both of you also producing this podcast. So I'm grateful that you're both a part of this team. Thanks for helping us out every week. It's our pleasure. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey, speaking of stories, we have another guest today who is a special person in my life because when I came to the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center, she's one of the first person I met in the hallway that I knew. And that's when you're coming to a new building, it's always more comforting when you run into people you know. When I saw her in the hallway, I remember stopping in the hallway and said, Cassie? And she looked at me, she was in one of the programs. So Cassie DeVrent is our guest today. And Cassie is a, a former student uh, working in, uh, who was in a program in one of my schools in which I was working. And she is one of the students who has chosen one of the programs in here. We have highlighted the broadcast media program, but there's a pretty excellent and powerful hairstyling program in the Arts and Tech Center. So Cassie is about to graduate. So Cassie, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'm so excited. And she's got great great person, great kid, great smile, personable. Cassie, you've been a student, you went to, tell us about first your, your, your life, your home life, your family, the influences. Okay. What? Um, well, my biological father lives in Scotland. So I live with my mom. Mm -hmm. Um, and I grew up with just my mom until I was seven. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my mom met her husband and she's been with him since. So yeah, that's like my immediate family. What influences, what kind of values did, did they kind of impart to you as you uh, grew up? Um, I think my mom really taught me that like quality time is one of the most important things about family um, and that you're not really going to like build relationships without quality time. Yeah. So it's been a priority for you to attend to your family. Do you have brothers or sisters? Um, I actually have two siblings and they live in Scotland with my dad. Oh. So I'm an only child in Canada, but in Scotland I have two siblings. So have you run into those uh, siblings in Scotland yet? Yeah, I've met them uh, four times. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What's, th what's that like? It's, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're um, three and six. So it's, it's really strange because I'm seeing pictures of them and they're like two feet taller than the last time I saw them. So it's like this kid is just completely growing up and I'm not really seeing it. Um, but it's also like amazing to have like love across the world. It's oh, just what a great yeah. line. Thank you. <laughs> and do they speak with a crazy little accent like that? And do they speak like that? You wonder if you could talk like that. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's right. That's awesome. Boy, that's that that's pretty diverse and interesting. Down the road, I'd be interested to see how much you interact and if you visit. Have you visited? Scotland? Yeah, I visit them like every summer. So this is my first year not seeing them since they were born. Do you like Scotland? I love it. Yeah, it's okay. beautiful. Would you like to go work in Scotland? Um, I think eventually, probably. How cool is that? <gasps> that is so cool. So that's a pretty different, that's a pretty different upbringing, right? For sure. Yeah. All right. And so you are, you've got Scottish relatives, but you are a French speaker and you went to Collège Belliveau, yeah. right? So you live in the St. Bon you've grown up in the St. Boniface area? Yeah. Okay. So what was your experience like at Collège Belliveau? What kinds of activities did you do? Um, I didn't really do too many after school activities because I lived on the other side of town. So it was just hard for transportation. Um, but I did play volleyball when it was in season and then I was in art class, but that was about it. The art class is interesting to me because in my time that I've known you, I've seen that design element in you. You like to create. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So when you, do you remember, do you remember your art classes in Belleville and being a creator? How did that make you feel? Um, 
I feel like I remember a lot of these things felt really restricted, um, but at the <laughs> on the other hand, it was really great having like um, an outlet for all of my emotions that I can't really let out doing math or science. Um, so it was just it was kind of like having therapy in the middle of a school day. Yeah. Hey, that's good. Uh, that's a uh, Bellevue. You needed therapy attending Bellevue. <laughs> I like that. That's that's pretty good. Be Bellevue's a homey school. To be my kids went to Bellevue, <laughs> and it is like it's uh, the expectations are high. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of students who do math and science. The art part is often um, a lesser thing that kids take. So it's like an elective, right? It's not yeah. something you have to take. So when you had an elective, you chose the artistic electives, right? Yeah, always. Right. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's awesome. So tell me more about when you're playing volleyball and stuff. Did you like playing volleyball? Did you like that kind of skills? What kind of skills do you get out of playing volleyball? Um, I guess communication, because when you're on the court, you need to be able to talk with your teammates and figure out who's going to be there for the ball. Um, I like that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You got to support each other, too. The interesting part is you chose a program when you were in Bellevue that was offered to all grade 11s or 12s in the division. It was a special project-based learning program mm -hmm. that was housed at Nelson McIntyre. And that's where I met you. Yeah. It was called the Propel, the Propel program. Now, that's indicative, I think, of who you are and how, how you moved, right? You saw yeah. an opportunity. They, they present the program to you. And when you heard it the first time, why, what attracted you to that program? Um, actually, the first time I heard about it, I was like, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, I actually was like invited to go see how the program worked, and I was really not interested. Um, and then, but like, why I, weren't you interested, do you think? Um, I was scared of leaving my friends. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I was just scared that they'd like forget about me, which was really silly. So I reconsidered, and then my mom called the principal and I went in to see how the program worked and I loved it so yeah. so now that's a place where you work on your own project for a semester and you're you're guided by a couple of teachers slash project managers mm -hmm. who allow your project to flourish what kind of project you went there in grade 11 what what was your project what did you create um, so in grade 11, I did photography, so I learned the basics, uh, sorry, the basics of using a camera, and then I learned the basics of Photoshop, um, and then I made, like, a photography book to, like, showcase all of my work, and, yeah, that's where I did my first semester there. And then you had to present the book in a larger... Yeah. in a larger space to a big audience and share what your project was. Yeah. And you had to present that for about a half hour. How yes. long was that presentation? That's a long presentation. I think my first one was 23 minutes. Yeah, so and it's pretty long. Exactly. It is a long thing, right? Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Now, that was an outlet for your creative impulses, right? That was a very cool outlet for you. That's a choice you took off the beaten path. I love that you said I was afraid to do it because it was off the beaten path and when kids have to make a call off the beaten path they normally choose the beaten path because their friends are there it's comfortable and it doesn't there's no danger involved right mm -hmm. about what will happen if you've made some calls in your life to say you got over that even though you felt that way you made some calls and said I'm gonna try this most high school kids don't do that. You understand that's a unique thing you did. Yeah. And that there were only like 15 people in that class. Do you remember? Yeah. So that was pretty neat. But you chose it when they offered it again in grade 12. You chose it again. Why did you choose it again? Um, I made really good connections with people the first time I met, went there. And I think I really met myself when I was there. Um, the teachers really push you to 
be the best that you can and I don't think I really got that kind of support from teachers from before so it was really cool to see a teacher care about you and care about what you care about not just about school what a great line that's that, that's pretty powerful so in your second in your second go and in a second semester in grade 12 at Propel what was your project um, I made art lessons and then I went to an elementary school and taught uh, the art lessons to kids in elementary school. So, yeah. What was that like? Like, did you like interacting with those little kids? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I used to think that I wanted to be an elementary school teacher. Um, but then working with those kids, I was exhausted after the day, <laughs> like <laughs> completely drained. So, like when you see your little your little cherubs in Scotland, <laughs> do, they, do, do they suck your time up? Yeah, too? it's oh, hard, yeah. eh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, that, that there's no doubt. It's as good to learn that though before you get out there and commit to that kind of work. Right? For sure. Yeah. Okay. But you did like what part of it? What part of that really connected with you? Um, I liked doing art and I liked teaching art um, and I liked connecting with some of the kids like some of them were really smart and really kind but then others were just not there which is fair because they're kids <laughs> but at the same time I can't be responsible for that. So. <laughs> okay. no, no. That's totally okay but you can see the theme in your life right you're, 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 you're moving toward I want to be in the creative world. I want to design, I want to create, I want to invent, I want to work with art. So you choose two years of Propel. You took two steps off the beaten path in high school. Mm -hmm. Most kids take zero steps. They just follow the path of taking the courses they need to go to university or finishing off uh, a basic program. You know, what was your, do you mind me asking, what, what do you think your average was in high school? Probably in the 70s. See, the yeah. 70, that's a classic. I Because I remember having that conversation with you. When you get a 70 average in high school, no one pays any attention to you. Yeah. Do you know why? No. <laughs> no. Well, because you're not failing, so you don't need any support. You're competent and you can do all the work. How hard you're trying is irrelevant. You're getting 70. And you're not going to get any awards at the end right? Yeah. So high school rewards those people who have the 90s and stuff at the end, right? They're all mm -hmm. walking up to get extra awards with their diplomas. High school spends a lot of time with students that have some difficulty getting to that 50 mark or they're at risk sometimes or they're, they're having some trouble with school in, for whatever reason. The 70% student gets zero attention. <laughs> But you made a call. Oh, L Lily, don't you think so? Lily's chuckling here. Yeah, what I'm thinking is like I have uh, two elder sisters at my home and my parents take care about my elder sister and I'm the youngest one. I got the care, the attention of them. And my second sister, you know, she's like get zero attention from my parents. I think the 70s is like this kind of because they, they are too quiet. They never make trouble and they don't yes. show very high talent and but they never lose go to very basic things. Yes. So <laughs> well, but that's right. And it's not that they don't show for me, don't show high talent. They've just never felt the interest in pushing themselves like the Propel program pushed you, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you created some 90 plus work in Propel in regular school, you're doing but Seven. mostly the 90 percent, 70 percent, I think that is the massive group of yes, the, yes, mm -hmm. most students. of the students. Most students are in this group. Yes, and and I think it's fair to say that the vast majority of students in high school are in that range, as you say, and they get almost no attention. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking that maybe we should talk with, oh, maybe some teachers or principals to listen to our <laughs> video or our podcast. They should rethink really about their, to, you know, to pay attention to this massive, you know, group of students yes. and to find more talents because the top levels, I think you push them or not, they will 
just to get there. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. why not we pay more attention to the 70s? Or the other angle is what Cassie did. I'm going to go out on my own and explore my possibilities on my own. Right? Yes. Instead of just go down the beaten path. That's, that's another key point. It's like if nobody to care about you or nobody support you, pay attention to you, yourself at least should pay attention to yourself to give yourself a chance to be, how to say, realized by people. Yeah. yeah, yeah right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isabella, what do you think of that? I think this is a very interesting thing because um, seeing like what Cassie was talking about, um, being like a 70s student, um, but at the same time figuring out that, you know, school isn't just the, the defining moment of your life too. You can yes. be good at other things. You don't need to necessarily be the uh, like straight A student that is good at everything. Um, but you can also be good at, you know, professions really, like mm -hmm. the whole Propel program her being able to see other um, uh, perspectives for her life, you know. Uh, I feel like we are always thinking about um, what are we supposed to do in high school and how that is going to define our future. But really, it's what you want to learn about yourself and how can you be a better person through other other ways that aren't necessarily the traditional ones. Wow, that's a brilliant comment. I yeah. think both of you will be on top of a mountain somewhere and people <laughs> will start climbing. <laughs> give give me career advice. Cassie's going to join them now. You, you guys could be a career group <laughs> at the top of a mountain. Help me. I need to know what to do. <laughs> but that's in brilliant. fact, Cassie also t taught me something, you know, as a, so at your young age, I'm, I don't have your, how to say, uh, sense or your, your way of thinking at, at the same age yes. like her, she do, right? Yes, yes. And she, she knows she like ours, I like ours too, right? She like to take uh, pictures, like want to be a photographer and like this, I like this too. But I didn't push myself to follow mm -hmm. this I'd say pass. Yes, this pass. And then yes. I just followed my parents' <laughs> order and I, I tried to push myself to be, to jump to the 90%, you know, students. Yes, yes. And then I wasted my 20 years <laughs> in, <laughs> in the career field, the industry that I don't really like, you know? And now after 20 years, mm -hmm. I'm here, I'm learning, you know, cameras, photographers, graphics, all the things. That's what I like. Awesome. So yeah, so, so I'm really admired her, you know. So Lily, that's, that's powerful. There's great hope for everyone, no matter what stage <laughs> you are in your life, right? Yeah, you, 20 can, years. Yeah, yeah, wow. you can, you can start at any time. Just don't forget what is your, I mean, uh, or where you want the, the, the first, uh, um, yes. aim, yes. right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So it's interesting. You did those pieces, but then uh, I'm interested too. Did your parents ever put pressure on you to choose or to do or to find or, hey, get going with your career? Because parents do that. I'm um, one of them and I did it to my kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, my mom definitely told me that taking a year off wasn't an option, okay. um, but I managed to take off six months. So mm -hmm. in between coming here, I just worked. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, my so mom, how, so how important was that six months um, to you, I to, guess to take that time off and refresh and re-energize? I don't know. I feel like if it would have been longer, maybe it would have been more beneficial, but if anything, it might've just made more anxious about coming back to school. Um, because I had been away from it for like six months, yes. which is the longest in my whole life. Of course. Um, but then once I was back, I was super relieved that I had that time for myself and to like figure out if this is actually what I want to go into. Um, That's a great point. And it's okay to think sometimes. And parents, you're a parent, I'm a parent. <laughs> yeah. we, do, we do put these crazy pressures on our, our children when sometimes it's important to take a break and think and refresh and go to work and meet new people and get fresh perspectives. Sometimes it is. 
And mm -hmm. sometimes we rush into people who go directly into university. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a stat, at, mm -hmm. I saw a study at the University of Manitoba, people going directly into university from high school, 50% of them fail calculus. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of people making a career stand or mm -hmm. a career call, getting dashed, mm -hmm. losing that, I can't do the math. Now there are other possibilities that they get good career guidance about, there's still many clusters around the things on the professions you may be interested in, but that hurts. Mm -hmm because maybe you didn't take the time to do some thinking or re some reflecting, even in high school. Do you remember even during Propel, we do something called the career canvas. Yeah. Those things made you think. And I, I, I do that with many students. They just make you think and reflect. And while we talk about this all the time, high school mm -hmm. is important to collect dots. Mm -hmm. The important part is reflecting and connecting those dots and helping you. So you chose another path though, six months later, now you've made another career path. Tell us what choice that was. Uh, I actually probably made this decision when I was in like grade 11. I figured okay. out that I liked her. Um, I grad or I didn't graduate. A girl that graduated from Belovo went to Avita and I went to get my hair done by her because she was still learning. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was a really cool environment. And I saw like a bunch of other people learning how to cut hair and like other people were working on clients. I just thought it was really interesting. Um, and that's kind of when I decided that I wanted to go into hair. And that and that was a great decision, but it fit along the lines of what you had been doing as you get off the path. How so? What do you, what do you mean? Like by I, that? I'm, I'm saying <laughs> you, you moved down, uh, or, or you thought about another creative enterprise for yourself where you could be a designer and a thinker and a creator. And you saw that in hairstyling. So you chose you originally chose something else, but then you moved to ATC, the Arts and Tech Center. Tell us about your experience at the Arts and Tech Center. How has this been? It's been really good. I find that the teachers are extremely supportive. Um, and if you're coming here in high school, I think that's really important because you're already stressed with regular school. And then you're learning a new trade on top of it, which is pretty stressful. But I think that they really care about their job and about what they're teaching. And it shows in what they do. Um, and it shows in what we do. Like, I can see how my teacher thinks when I'm doing my work. You know, mm. like, I can see what she would tell me I need to improve on, and I can see what she would like. So. And that is such an important piece of being a student. When students can self-assess their own work mm -hmm. and know whether or not it's good or bad. Like, how many times do I give a paper back to a student? Let's say they write a paper on Hamlet for me. I give the feedback back. And they're, what do you mean? They can't mm -hmm. see their own work. People treat school sometimes as just something you turn in. I'm going to turn in, give me my C or B or A, move on to the next one. If you can see that, you are an advanced thinker and advanced learner if you can assess your own work. And you don't need someone to tell you that Magnifico's hair looks bad and I just did it. <laughs> no, not that you have. But it's... it's uh, if you can do that, that, that's a pretty cool piece in your life. So you've gone off this beaten path constantly. Yep. Is, is this the final stop? Uh, I don't think so, no. I have been really into weddings for like my whole life and eventually mm -hmm. I want to be a wedding planner. Oh, wow. so, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah. And, and do you think you've developed you're developing the skills to be a wedding planner. What do you think a wedding planner needs to be able to do? Um, I think you need really good organizational skills and uh, time management and communication skills. And luckily enough, I learned all of those at Propel because they really focus on yeah. time management. Well, and... it's, it, it's a project management program, yeah. right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's probably the best one in the division, maybe yeah. the best one in, in, in Manitoba. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, honestly. Uh, yeah, also for this kind of wedding management, it's like uh, her experience by learning 
uh, photographer, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And all this kind of Photoshop things. Yes. All hair cutting things can help this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, I think when you're planning a room for a wedding and you look at a table and how to decorate it, it will be very different from Adriano <laughs> decorating <laughs> the table. <laughs> Right? Yeah. The, the centerpiece will be different. The cloth will be different. <laughs> the beautiful little uh, nuances that surround the table will be part of your constant iterating your creative impulses. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So what are the creative things that you're doing on the side? You're going to do hair. You're actually working at a hair salon, are you not? Yeah. Talk about yeah. that. Um. So right now, or like before the lockdown, I was just working as a receptionist. And then after the lockdown, I'm going to be starting to assist for one of the senior stylists who is also the owner of the salon. Oh, so, excellent. Yeah. So you're gonna, be, you're gonna be a paid hairstylist. Yeah. So that's a great art and tech center bonus that they prepare you for the world of work and they start connecting you to organizations and start building a network of people with whom you can build relationships. You talked about building relationships. Has this program and has your life been about building relationships? Definitely, yes. yeah. Who are yeah. the important mentors in your life? Um, that girl that I graduated with, actually, her name's Kaya. Yeah. Um, she actually works at the same salon that I work at now. Oh. So it's actually really cool because I saw her when she was just starting and now I'm seeing her working and she is amazing. Like she's completely blossomed and um, I definitely look up to her. Like That's whenever. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. And... I have no doubt someone's going to say, hey, I'm working with Cassie. She's completely blossoming too. I see it happening. I see this young person becoming this person in charge of her own education, in charge of her own path. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. That's really, <laughs> that's really good stuff. Hey, if you were, do you have a, Isabella, do you have anything you want to ask uh, Cassie? Uh, I just think it's so cool that you talked about being a wedding planner because I think you have a little bit of all elements related to wedding, you know, having experience with photography, um, being able to do hair. I mean, that's a huge component for a bride, right? Um, so I just wanted to know, are you going to complement some things uh, regarding to wedding? So do you think about maybe being a hairstylist for weddings or maybe a photographer for weddings? Or um, do you want to focus just on the managing part? Um, before I used to really want to do wedding photography and I also really liked doing updos when I first started, but now I really don't like bridal hair that much. Um, mm -hmm. so I would definitely prefer to concentrate on actually planning the event. Oh, so, that's pretty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so now it's you... cool that you had this experience. Oh. Sorry, um, it's cool that you had this experience um, learning a little bit more about each of these tasks because like you said, oh, right now I focus more on the managing part. Um, and that's something that I think everyone that's listening to this podcast um, should learn with you, Cassie, which is um, try different things. And if you don't feel okay with them, then you know try to get the best out of this experience and learn from that. You don't necessarily have to get it right all the time. Oh, yeah. well said. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's well what said. I want to say. So, well, Bella, you, you, it, you just it, said what I want to say. It's too late. Isabella already said it. <laughs> <laughs> Isabella, she tried to steal your line, okay? Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm just a very, um, how to say, I, 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 I like to take pictures I got. I when I gave birth of my daughter and I make up my mind that I will be her own personal photographer, you know, I will record <laughs> every, you know, great moment for her. Yeah. And then I make up my mind that I will be the wedding photographer uh -huh. for my daughter, you know, that's why I practice mm -hmm. a lot about how to take picture. But according to Cassie's story is like, as a young people, you have plenty of time and opportunities to try different things. 
and don't yes. be hesitate and try it. And when you feel yes. like, okay, oh, this one is not, I'm not sure I really want it. Okay, why not another way, right? So during this kind of step-by-step, -step, you try and you don't waste any time because each time you gain some experience and this kind of experience will definitely build up your whole career. I mean, life, mm -hmm. right? Well said, well said. That's really good. So <laughs> Cassie, think about this now. If you were to give some advice to a grade 10 student at College Belliveau thinking, I don't know what to do after high school. What would you say to them? Um, this, this is part of your, <laughs> when you're on the mountain with Lily and Isabella and people are coming <laughs> to visit you, this is a huge part of you being on that mountain. What would you tell a young person? Um, I guess Some advice. if you're trying to figure it out and you have ideas of what you think you would like, it is extremely important to give them a shot because you're not going to know if you like something without trying it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important to try different things before choosing what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, because like people say life is short, but it's not like you don't want to spend <laughs> your whole life doing something you hate. <laughs> yeah, you're totally right. I agree. <laughs> it, uh, it's short when when it's passing but once you're done you're gonna be upset if you spent your whole life doing something that you're miserable about you know that's true that's yeah. true well done you know what there's uh there's there's something profound about what you're saying like at a young age you're making all these important decisions and I, I, I like when you mentioned try it Lily's mm -hmm. saying that too Isabella's saying that what and you have to remember what sticks to you when you try things and what stuff doesn't and every time you move forward on to the next activity something else will stick and you'll you'll slowly develop this sense of that important jigsaw of you that you're completing every time you try something new every time a new experience emerges so I, I wish you well. I think you're on the path. I, I love that you are a person who seeks adventure in your life as someone who likes to try new things and see where they take you and see where they go. I think it's pretty powerful. Anything else you want to add, Lily, Isabella? No, I, I think we, get, we have a perfect and wonderful talk with Cassie. I think so too. Isabella, yeah. anything? Oh, I just loved um, listening to your story, Cassie, and I love your remark about um, life isn't uh, isn't short; it's long. And, um, <laughs> yeah, life is short, but we can that. make it long. <laughs> That's pretty profound. Yeah, exactly. That could be the title. I think yeah. that could be the title of your book. Yeah. Okay. Don't let anyone tell you life is short. <laughs> it's, it's damn long. <laughs> okay. By Cassie Devrent. Yeah. I think that's great. So, Cassie appreciate you being here. You've been an incredible and exceptional guest with a lot of insight for people. I think people will be inspired by what you said. So I really appreciate your thoughts and you taking the time with us today. Thank you to Lily and Isabella, as always, yeah. for being the brains behind this whole operation. And Thank that's you. another edition of Adventures in Careerland, Episode 7. We'll be on Spotify, Apple, and LRSD Radio. So take the time to listen on your way home from work, to work, or any time you need to be inspired by stories about students and their great pathing. Take care, everybody. Have a good week. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Cassie. Yeah, thank you. All right, is there any, are you guys okay in there? Can we end? You don't get...